you a little bit about the accessories. What are, what are some, of the, some of the things, you know, you see a lot of people going to the gym and some people have belts, some people have straps, some people have head, headphones. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the things that you carry to the gym every day that, uh, that help you get through the workout and manipulate some of the maneuvers that are harder? Um, well, as you know, today, um, <laughs> how many pairs have you been through? Um, going my fourth pair of Versa grips. <laughs> um, I They're in high demand. People steal them. Yeah, yeah, they love stealing those things. So I have to buy another pair of Versa grips. Um, I have my my straps. Uh, I've got a weight belt. I've got my music. I've got my gum. And that's about all I need. What about let's let's talk about uh, this one was touchy for me, and it, it's hard as a as a trainer or a coach to know somebody's threshold. Are you injured or are you hurt? That's what the football coach used to say to me all the time. You lay on the ground, mm -hmm. that, that's a classic. Yeah. Are you, if you're hurt, get up and play. If you're yeah. injured, we'll call somebody in. Right. And that's kind of the way I have to go with training. I'm trying to hurt you, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me you're hurt, that just makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> are you injured? Uh, uh. Well, one of the first times we trained with Dell, I had him doing uh, chin-ups or something and tweaked his shoulder. What, what happened was, is he then started to avoid that shoulder. And I wrote him a workout. And that workout wasn't being followed. Because of an issue mentally, I feel like, after a while, when the shoulder wasn't hurting anymore, it was just, it was mentally preventing him from doing it. Either A, didn't want to hurt it again, or B, just didn't feel like it was better. We had to get over that. Tell, tell him about that transition of doing what's on the paper. Um, it, well, it's, it's, it's the same thing, it's like it's in your head. It's like you think you're injured or you think it's, it's, it's an excuse, basically. It's, it's all it is, is an excuse. And it might hurt more than you want it to, but you have to get past that because it's not, like I say, it's not an injury. It, you kept on saying, go, go get an MRI. If it's that bad, go get an MRI. If, yeah. tell, prove if it, you're prove injured, it, go spend $800. Pr prove it to me that it's, you know, it's medical. If not, get through it and we did <laughs> and we're still getting there yep. we're still we're still working through it and we're getting there and um, my shoulder is much better and I can definitely see an improvement in my my uh, chest presses and chest workouts now because it's, it's gotten past that all right anything else you want to share with the group before we go words of inspiration to any any gentlemen out there that have been putting back the beers and enjoying their life mm -hmm and hiding from an inner demon? Um, well, you're never gonna do it unless you wanna do it for you. You're not gonna do it for a judge, you're not gonna do it for your wife, you're not gonna do it to walk down the street like a peacock. Um, you have to get to that day um, for you, why you wanna do it for you. And that's the only, I don't care what it is, whether it's drinking or smoking or getting in shape, until you dig down and, and find out the why, because it's a lot of work. And you gotta say, some mornings when you get up at four o'clock in the morning, like, why am I doing this? It's because no matter what happens that day in your life, you made that decision, that's what you're gonna do. And you made that decision, so you're gonna nail it. Um, and stop kidding yourself. Um, and if you really wanna do that, you can do it. I'm here to tell you that I never thought I'd I never thought I'd be on stage in a physique contest. Come on. At 51, not my wildest dreams, and that's what Dave said to me. He goes, when we first started training, he goes, I'll get you to where you want to be beyond your wildest dreams. And I got the email still. I said that? Yep. <laughs> I'm talking some trash right there. You're talking some smack. I, I, I believe I, I believe he was dreaming very big. I, I believe it. <laughs> well, did we get there? Uh, we're, we're close. You dream pretty big. Yeah. I like it. When I hit the Grand Prix next year, we'll know. He's been training now 18 months. Okay. And what he's saying is, is he has another goal. How symbolic is that? Climbing up the mountain, you think you got to the top, and oh boy, dang it, there's another ridge, and you got to keep going. But myself, I'm trying to become the world champion. Okay, I want to win a bodybuilding contest and be the world champion. I want to get more covers. I want to. I want to try to be Johnny Fitness, David Kimberly, edified forever in this industry. I kind of thought it was going to happen. Well, you know, I thought I was special. Oh, where's my red carpet? Where, 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 where's my edification that's going to last forever? Where's my championship? And we're three years into it. Mm -hmm. Three years of daily sweating, sometimes emotional, uh, hurting, you know, uh, going without. Uh, like he talked about, there's 
You know, when you wake up at four in the morning and you don't get home till eight o'clock at night, what else is there time for? Cooking, eating, laundry, and sleeping? So I've been going hard at that for three years and I still haven't reached my goal. And it's, uh, it's not frustrating anymore, it's fun. It's, it's, part of the, it's part of the path, it's part of the life. I know a lot of pros that, that have never won a championship. They won some shows that are my heroes. So if I don't win one, it's okay. I would like to. And like he said, he's got a goal that's how many months away now? Uh, nine. Nine months, add up 18 to that, that's 27 months. Okay, of a goal, 27 months for one day, for 10 minutes. Yeah, not even. <laughs> not even. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite the obligation to yourself. And like he said, if you don't do it for you, you're not gonna do it, mm -hmm. or you'll quit. One of the things that, like you said earlier, was nobody can take it from you. You guys, I started training again and decided to make it my job. Well, the part of me deciding to make it my job was very symbolic because I just lost everything. 30 years old, and I lost more than I could make in the next three years if I didn't pay a single bill to pay back. Like, nothing left. The, the definition of bouncing on bottom is flat. So, when I started to find an avenue for my frustration, and it would build something that nobody could take from me, I became a dick. No housing market crash can take this from me. All of you guys have a life that is dependent on something else. So it's symbolic, right? In, in any avenue, wherever you look. And for me, I found the one thing that nobody can take from me. I've earned this. It's mine to win or lose. I can get in a car wreck and lose it, that's fair. Mm -hmm. You know, there's health issues that, that are unavoidable. We can avoid a lot of them doing this lifestyle, but some of them are unavoidable, that's fair. But if you rack up everything in your life, everything, sum it all up, this is the only thing I've ever found that nobody can take from you besides faith. Something you built, something you earned. Faith is one of those, you gotta earn it. It just didn't come. <laughs> faith is something you work on a lot. So, yeah, leaving you with that, have some faith, and go earn something that nobody can ever take from you. What's your out, buddy? Uh, ditto. <laughs> yeah! Give me a gird. <laughs>